Hey guys, here with another bonus draft video in this year of modern flashbacks. I've managed not to miss one so far, although I can tell you I will be missing several probably this summer as I'll be traveling, but I'm going to keep trying to do them while I can. Um, and this week I'm doing a Triple Ravnica flashback draft. Uh, Triple Ravnica is considered one of the best, Ravna, any Ravnica draft, you know, as long as one pack involves Ravnica, uh, the first set, in other words, like block drafts and two packs of Ravnica and one pack of Dissension, I think is the second one. Maybe it's Guild Pact. I don't remember the order, but uh, they're all really good formats. They're really interesting drafts because there's only like three color, four color pair combinations that you really want to be drafting at all, um, which is an interesting thing. Um, there's only Boros, which is red, white, Demir, which is black, blue, Golgari, which is black, green, and Selesnya, which is green, white. So those are basically all you have. Um, it usually isn't possible in another draft format to try to support multiple two color pairs, but in this, in this set, basically every card is a card in one of those guilds. So it's possible. Multiple people can be in the same guild. Uh, and, uh, that's part of what makes it kind of cool. Um, the trick is figuring out which color pair is open. Um, because if you sort of, you know, get tunnel vision and try to draft one, there could be too many people at the table in Selesnya, for example, and each of the guilds sort of has their own flavor. Um, it, I, I feel like, you know, especially having done these modern flashback drafts, this is the first time where they really, really tried to make each two color pair have its own specific archetype, which is something we see more often now, but we didn't used to see that much of. And that's what we will see here. Um, but yeah, waiting on the, well, I only need one more person. I can probably keep talking. I haven't drafted Ravnica since it came back, came out like, you know, forever ago, 10 years ago or whatever. So it'll be fun to draft it. Ooh, life from the loam. That might be worth something. Will influence my decision here. Uh, life from the loam. Yeah, it's worth six fifty six. Can't really say no to that. Not sure how good it's really going to be in limited. Uh, well, I would guess not very, although Dredge, you know, that's the black-green deck, the Golgari deck sort of plan is to Dredge. Um, other cards of note here, Vidalkin's Dismissers, fine. All of these are pretty good if you're in those colors, so are Signets. Um, I like Clutch of the Undercity, okay. Night Guard Patrol is solid. This pack's actually kind of weak. I mean, Disembowel's solid. Bell Tower Sphinx is really good if you end up in the mill deck, which is the blue-black deck, um, because it's a creature who simultaneously blocks for you and causes pro you know, mills your opponent. But we got to take life from the loam here on value alone. So that's what we'll do. You know, this is, <laughs> it's cost 10 tickets to enter, so six is pretty big. Grows off. I don't think we want that. What do we want here, though? Um, I mean, Civic Wayfinder is a nice sort of just like open-ended card. Tidewater Minions, better than it looks just because it can block and it can untap the, uh, the tap lands. Lore Broker lets both people loot, which is interesting. Um, this pack, though, I'm also not overly impressed with. I mean, there's lots of playable cards like Snapping Drake, Tidewater Minion, Aura Touched Mage if we pick up an Aura or two. Centaur Safeguard's fine. Civic Wayfinder is fine. I'm thinking of just going with the Wayfinder because it's good it, whether I end up in um, Simic or not Simic. We're not there yet. <laughs> whether I end up in Selesnya or um, the black green one, Golgari, right there. Because um, otherwise, this pack is not looking real great to me. So I'm going to go with the Civic Wayfinder who will help me fix while being a, you know, dude. Warp World kind of card you want to take in limited just to make everyone's life difficult like look at that block of text it's definitely one of the weirdest weirdest cards in magic um okay yeah i mean demer infiltrators okay don't really want to commit to two colors i like flight of fancy this is one of the few sets where i actually find the auras to be pretty good because um they all have like effects that come along with them. Some of them are even removal spells, things like that. Goblin Fire Fiend, not really feeling it. I mean, it could also just take Greater Moss Dog. It's nothing exciting, but it's a guy. He has Dredge, too, so it works well, I guess, with Life from the Loam. Um, yeah, this pack, 
not really seeing much. Yeah, I think I just go with the Moss Dog. Flight of Fancy is okay, but there just wasn't anything there that stood out to me. Clinging Darkness is a solid removal spell that would put us into Golgari pretty strongly. Um, in which case, I guess Life from the Loam is not terrible because we will be dredging stuff into our graveyard. Uh, so I think I'm just going to take the, the decent removal spell and Clinging Darkness here. Over like another Moss Dog or a Safeguard. My match has started. Um, but yeah, I think I just take Clinging Darkness. So here, I mean, we still could technically go into Selesnia. That's not an awful card in a Selesnia deck. We haven't seen any of like the big token generators one really wants though either. I could take another Clinging Darkness. I could also just take a Centaur Safeguard, which, you know, leaves us open to being um, Selesnia as well. In Stasis Cell, but not an amazing one. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go with Safeguard here. Kind of hard to read the signals in this particular draft. It's <laughs> been a weird one. I don't like Carry on Howler a whole lot, but he's yeah, you know, a card. I don't even though this has Dredge. I don't really want it either. Um, could just take a Selesnya Signet. You know, they help you ramp while also helping you fix. So that's probably just what I'll take here. Okay, Golgari Brown Scale I think is pretty good. It's a three mana two 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 three actually who can you know gain you life every time you dredge it and stuff like that. Um, so I think that's what I'll take here. Tidewater Minion still around and that's a solid card. Seeds of Strength is also a cool combat trick, um, but uh, I'm gonna go with the Brown Scale. Okay, Elves of Deep Shadow is a pretty good sign. So we can do some ramping. Let's have Svagvos which is an okay one, uh, but I'm going to take the Elves. Which, right, so now we have a Gruul Signet. And I think, I mean, a Golgari Signet, rather. Uh, Gruul not around yet. I think I go ahead and just take that. We want to get a few things with, that give us some graveyard synergies. There are a lot of those in the black-green deck, obviously, since you want to be dredging and stuff like that. So I don't know about Life from the Loam still, though. I mean, I guess, <laughs> I guess it's a card, but you have to end up with some decent value lands to really make it worth getting lands back or something that lets you makes you discard cards to make it worth it. Here, I guess I will take Benevolent Ancestor. Hmm, I guess I'll take Dryad's Caress. It's not especially good, though, as you can see. <laughs> these two cards, these are, all these cards are pretty unplayable. So I'll take the different one. Uh, Dromad Purebred isn't terrible. It's also not good. That's pretty bad, though. Even with Horde Touched Mage, you don't really want a Conclave's Blessing. So, I mean, we could end up in Selesnia just as easily still. Yeah, I mean, I think that's... I mean, we do have some decent Golgari, but none of the cards in our deck right now are especially powerful. We didn't really see anything ultra-exciting so far. This is a cool card. Let's you draw a bunch of cards if you're willing to pay a bunch of life. Uh, Golgari Rock 
Orem is pretty good if we're going to be Golgari. Gives us a nice big finisher. Um, let's see here. We have another Civic Wayfinder. Oh, we probably want Scatter the Seeds, actually. Which definitely makes me want to go more into Selesnia, but you don't actually have to be. Vitugazi, the City Tree, also makes me want to do that. They're both very good. Um, at least, but with this one, you can even play it in a Golgari deck. It's just not going to be as good. Um, yeah, I think that's probably what we want here. Yeah, that's what I'll take. It's one of the better commons in the set. So, I mean, you know, we haven't actually even picked up a black card yet, so black can't be that open, right? I mean, Elves of the Deep Shadow is the closest thing we have. Um, oh, we do have Clinging Darkness, but, you know, who needs it? Null Stone Gargoyle. Uh, ooh, there we go. Please. Things are starting to look the way I'd like them to now that we have back-to-back -back Scatter the Seeds. This thing's really good, Vishino Fangtail. Um, yeah, so is Sun Home Enforcer. But I think we'd rather have another Scatter here. And an Evangel, okay. And another Vitu Gazi the City Tree. Kind of a hard choice, actually. So we could probably lose you guys. Probably don't want life from the loam now either. The other stuff is fine for now, anyway. Um, so Evangel versus. If we were still Golgari, Shambling Shell is pretty nice too. But Evangel and Vitugazi are both better, I think. It's a hard choice, though. Vitugazi is a land, making it pretty strong. I mean, you can make a sapperling every turn if you have the mana, but this makes it even more che makes a sapperling even more cheaply. But it's also easier to kill. <sighs> yeah, I think I just go for the Evangel though. We do need two drops anyway, so another one of these seems fine. Trades with a lot of stuff and gains you life in the process. Okay, Siege Worm gives us a big finisher. Um, Mortipede, if we were still Golgari, isn't a bad card. Uh, but yeah, I'll take Siege Worm here. Gather Courage is a pretty good trick. Man, although Boros is looking real open. I mean, Thundersong Trumpeter, Spark Mage Apprentice, Fiery Conclusion, and eh, not really Blockbuster, but the rest but I guess I'll just take a trick here and gather courage. It's a free trick, basically, so I don't mind it. I feel like Selesnya is open enough. I mean, we did get these very early in this pack. Ooh, no, we don't want to do that. But uh, still. I mean, Civic Wayfinder can potentially enable us to splash something if we got something we really wanted in another color. So far, we don't have that. Okay, Bramble Elemental is good if we can manage to pick up some auras for it. I mean, and it's still the fail cases of 5 mana 4-4, four, four, which isn't terrible, but it'll make Sapperlings every time you put an aura on it. Um, and there are good auras in this format. Um, like Fists of Ironwood is the green one that we would want to get to go onto this Bramble Elemental. There's a Golgari Rot Farm, but yeah, I think we just take the Bramble Elemental here. This is also pretty good. Uh if we were still Golgari, but I've been convinced to go elsewhere. Um, right, another Gather Courage, I guess. We don't really have much in terms of removal at this point, so I guess that's, you know, our tricks will be good for us. We do have several creatures. I mean, a Rotworm isn't the most terrible thing to splash, but yeah, I don't really want a Votary of the Conclave or an Elvish Skysweeper, so I think I will just take the Rotworm. We need Auras for Aura Touched Worm and Bramble Elemental, so trying to go after those in this pack isn't a bad idea. Yeah, a bunch of bad red cards. A bunch of bad cards in general, I guess. Um... Yeah, I guess War Torch Goblin is probably the best of the bunch here, huh? So we could play our Skogari Signet too, which will enable us to splash stuff. You know, like a Mortipede. 
which is, I guess, what I'll take here, even though I don't love it. I don't want Gatehound. It's not especially good. We have better reasons to play Auras already than Gatehound. Uh, now I'll take one of these. Creature who can block forever isn't the worst thing, though it's a pretty expensive regeneration cost. So yeah, at this point, I don't think we're playing that. It's it, Unlike Bramble Elemental, which is okay, even if you don't have a lot of... Um, Auras, uh, Aura Touch Mage is bad unless you have, uh, you know, one or two Auras. Do we still want Benevolent Ancestor? Yeah, maybe. I mean, we are a little bit low on creatures. Sadistic Augur Mage. I mean, this isn't a bad sideboard card. Blowing up problem enchantments is a thing. Dromad Purebred number two. Probably not even going to play our first one. So yeah, I mean, I'd like to pick up some of the high-quality auras that we could get. I uh, think Fists of Ironwood's the biggest one. Unfortunately, the white one... Ooh, man. Well... <laughs> Gar Gar Grave Shell Scarab is really good, and we could definitely splash for it. Um, we definitely could. It's also Transluminant, though. But I think we probably... The Scarab's just a lot stronger. I mean, it's a 5-mana 4-4. Four, four, it's Dredge 1 and can draw you cards and stuff. Oh, but there's also a Fist of Ironwood. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, my life's going to be easier, probably, if I just go for Fist of Ironwood over a Grave Shell Scarab. So I think that's probably what I take here, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we already have, we want to be playing Auras for various reasons already. Of course, there's another one right here, which, you know, I'm not going to complain about. Uh, but, so we're definitely taking another one. Um, Carbon Care. That's, that's a complicated card. I mean, he's very good if you play him on turn two. If you play him later, he's still not amazing in limited, you know, but he can get big. Uh, Night Guard Patrol is also good. Um... I'm kind of thinking about the Karyatid, though. It blocks forever, draws you a card. The Kudzu is also very good, though, like I said. But you do want to play him on turn two most of the time, and that's hard to guarantee. Um, yeah, so do we want a Karyatid or a Kudzu? That is the question. I'm kind of leaning towards the Kudzu. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go for. He has Landfall before Landfall existed. Eh. It just seems so bad to top deck him late. So I am going to go for the Karyatid. Just imagining top decking that late is awful. Man, this pack. Bramble Elemental, Fist of Ironwood number three. I mean, we're taking the third Fist of Ironwood, but I would not mind another Bramble Elemental. So, so it may be worth it to play Aura Touched Mage now. The Golgari Signet that could help us splash black if we wanted to. Probably just take another Safeguard. I mean, he's perfectly playable, I think. Uh, Congregation of Dawn is okay, but we don't have anything so scary that we really want to be digging for it. Uh, we don't have any huge bombs or anything. We're trying to go wide. We do need some more cards with Convoke, like our Siege Worm, but I will take a second Bramble Elemental. Uh, Overwhelm would also be nice. But I'm just going to go with a Bramble Elemental here. Yeah, I probably don't want to bother with a Splash. So three Fists of Ironwood is good. We can make a lot of tokens. We would like another big Convoke win condition like our Siege Worm. But I mean Bramble Elemental also turns into one. But uh, where's Aura Touch Mage? I mean... If you think about Aura Touch Mage in this deck, grabbing Fists of Ironwood, that means you're paying six for five power, basically, which isn't terrible. Here's another good win condition for us, but there's also a Selesnia Sanctuary. But I think what we really need is another like big creature who we can make huge with all of our Sapperling tokens. So, I mean, and I am still thinking about Aura Touch Mage, but... This is the one that makes it go on it, right? Yeah. Because all we have are Fists of Ironwood to search up. Probably don't really want this. Uh, 
Hmm. Do we want a bathe in light? Our deck is almost all green, so it could be particularly good in certain situations. Um, Sun Cedar Hierophant's okay, but uh, I think I'll take a Bathe in Light here. Might want to side it in. Transluminant came back. That's pretty good for us. And another one. Okay, well, things starting to come together here at the end. Um... I think we just want the Vitae here as a. Not sure, like, you know, white itself was actually very open. I mean, we actually ended up with very few white cards. We're almost a mono green deck, actually. And. That may make it so I can splash for the Rot Worm, since we're basically mono green. Yeah, okay. I don't really like most of these things. Congregation of Dawn. I'll think about it. I mean, we, the one thing we don't have is removal. Like, we're just going to try to, like, go wide on our opponent and win that way. It, but we just don't have, like, real removal. We have some Gather Courages as tricks. That's all we got. Didn't get any Faith Fetters, which would have been nice. only have the one four drop which is a little weird but hey yeah i don't think we want any of those things so we have to trim and i think maybe we do just still cut out black even though the rotworm does give us another big wind condition creature and it actually you know we're not gonna have a lot of black but it doesn't work terribly with sapperlings you don't have trample do you no you just get huge I mean, we'd have to run our Signet, and we do have the one Civic Wayfinder, but yeah, I think we're stretching ourselves too much. We don't really want this in our deck either, I don't think. I mean, the effect is nice in that I guess I could search out my Siege Worm or my Rootkin ally that will help me win the game. Um, but, eh. Can we get away with 17 lands? We probably can. You have to remember, Scatter the Seeds probably cost something more like three. Root Canal I probably cost more like five, and this probably cost more like five. Um, do I want Aura Touched Mage? It'll basically be turning into a Sapperling token making creature. It'll be a 3-3 three, three Trampler who makes two Sapperlings when it comes into play. Assuming my opponent doesn't kill the Aura Touched Mage. Um, Well, the good news is, like, they even if they kill Aura Touched Mage in response, I do get to put it into my hand. So that's the thing. I mean, I probably can get away with 24 here. Because, um, like, you know, Bramble Elementals are only, like, legitimate 5. Hmm. Yeah, I think I just cut Aura Touch Mage, and we basically are a mono green deck, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. Um, but, you know, we got two Scatter the Seeds and three Fists of Ironwood, so green was, and we got these Transluminants really late, so green was pretty open. Green was pretty open. Um, all right, well, I think this is basically our deck, but I probably want to run a 23rd card. Don't probably want life from the loam. Uh, defensive card like Benevolent Ancestor, maybe. Bathe in Light, I guess, does give me another trick in my deck that just doesn't have... Um, my deck just doesn't have uh, a whole lot of... Uh, remo it doesn't have any removal, really, which is bad. <laughs> so I think another trick is okay. I mean, almost all my creatures are green. Actually, all my creatures are green now. Um, so the 
problem is it also gives my opponent's creatures protection if they're the same color as mine, which isn't unlikely. So I don't know that I like that. Maybe I'd just rather have a benevolent ancestor. Yeah, that's probably what I want. All right, it's gonna. Let's see what it tells us about lands. Probably wants us to play like two planes, three. There we go. Uh, but I think we can probably drop it to six. That's probably plenty. Eleven six. I mean, maybe we do want it lower. We only have one card, two cards that actually have to have white, and we have a Civic Wayfinder. So, yeah. That's probably okay. With, and we have a Signet. So between the Signet and the Wayfinder, theoretically, I think we'll get there on white. We do want white for Transluminant. Uh, so, yeah, let me change it slightly to that. Okay. I think that's good. All right. Well, this is our deck. Almost a mono green thing, but it's Selesnia, technically, I suppose. Uh, we definitely got the Selesnia theme of make a bunch of tokens. We didn't, unfortunately, get a big Anthem effect, but... We can win just by swarming and with root canal, I siege worms and bramble elementals with trample, stuff like that. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes.